guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and I typically like to do fashion DIYs, but today I am going to be redoing my sewing studio space in my apartment. This has been a project that I've been kind of thinking about and working on for a couple of weeks now, but the IKEA stuff finally arrived and now I have to stop procrastinating and actually go through everything, organize, put stuff together, all that jazz. So, um, what kind of brought this whole thing on is I was lucky enough to get a serger for Christmas as well as a dress form and um, I need to have the space to kind of utilize everything. And so essentially what I'm looking to do with this space is I purchased a long tabletop from Ikea and I'm going to turn this into two seating areas so I have a space for my single stitch sewing machine and then I'll have a space for my serger. So I am essentially swapping out this desk and replacing it with a longer one. So this is the space I am working with and it really does nothing for me. Not only am I planning to expand my desk space, but I also plan to do a gallery wall above it with pegboards and shelving spaces. So first things first is going to be to declutter and organize. So I started with this mess. So I just started emptying out a couple of my drawers and I realized I'm now just creating more of a mess by leaving all my stuff out on a table and that's kind of stressing me out. So I think the best strategy is to open up some of the IKEA drawers that I bought and make them and that way I can organize as I am cleaning. I think that's probably the most efficient way to do this, but I feel like the drawers are gonna take me an eternity because that's usually how Ikea furniture goes. So everything was purchased from Ikea and for my desk, I went with the Linmon large tabletop and the Alex drawers as my legs. The Alex drawers actually had two different style of drawers you could choose from at the time, but I can only seem to find the one at the time of this video. Um, I decided on the two different variations because I liked the asymmetrical look and the deep filing cabinet drawer. several hours later. Now that the drawers are complete, it's time to move on to assembling the desk. But before I can get to that, I need to clear out the space and take apart the old desk. I'm trying to create a desk with two seating spots with the Alex drawers on either side, but I needed something to divide the middle. And I thought one of these cupboards from my existing desk could be a good solution and it's something I've already owned. So I needed to remove the top to get the shelf unit on its own. Then I measured out how much I needed to take off, which ended up being roughly half an inch. Luckily, I had two chances to get it right, and my original plan was to use this saw I borrowed from my dad, but after I did a test run, I decided to go against that and save myself the bloodbath, and opted to use my handsaw, regardless of how much longer it took me. Okay, once that is done, it's time to secure the top to the drawers. Okay, so. Things are coming along very slowly. Um, I have the desk top on top of my legs and I had to figure out a way to secure it, which I guess I didn't think about until I set it down. And I didn't realize how uneven it was. Like it wasn't like flush, which is confusing because I don't even understand how you're supposed to put these like, custom IKEA desks together because there wasn't anything like online that like told you to I don't know. Anyways, so I've been just compromising and making do with a drill, which I'm not the most experienced with power tools, so it's been interesting. So essentially, I had to take the drawers out of the one side so I could access the top of the set of drawers so I could drill through both layers and secure it with a screw. Um, but to do that, the drill bits that my dad had like lent to me were like really long and I was really afraid of like puncturing both sides and just to avoid all of that, I just went out and purchased a smaller um, drill bit. So when I line it up, it won't go all the way through. So it's a little bit less intimidating. Um, so yeah, I secured the one side down. I did an okay job. It's, I just don't want it to move. I'm not looking for perfection here, okay? I just need a stable tabletop. So I did the one side um, and now I'm gonna move on to the other. With the drawers removed, I used clamps to keep the top in place. Then it was time to drill. Remember your safety goggles. 
Then I drilled four pilot holes, one in each corner, meaning I had to crawl into this thing and drill the back too. Very grateful in the moment for having the build of a 12 year old boy. Then screwed the screws to hold the desk in place. I also realized there was no cute way to secure the middle piece with the supplies that I had on hand, so I opted for just letting it rest there, which I don't mind since the spaces under the desk were a little bit more narrow than I'd hoped, so this allowed me to slide the cupboard over if I needed to. Now the desk portion of this transformation is complete. Okay, it has been months since I have touched or updated my studio space in my apartment for this transformation and I honestly even forgot that I was filming this transformation so I didn't film my dad coming in and installing these but I am going to show you where I'm at because up until this point I've had the desk done and then now I am finally doing my gallery wall. So this is what we're working with so far. So excuse the mess, but I have this like little cubby here which I need to figure out how to hide the back of that. I have a shelf here and a pegboard on this side, ironing board, and I'm gonna insert another pegboard over here, kind of staggered so the heights are different, and then eventually I'm gonna find something, hopefully circular, to put here, just to kind of offset the wall. And yeah, then I'm gonna hopefully decorate it, and I'm gonna recover the ironing board eventually. I have a lot of tasks, a lot of projects on the go, but this is what uh, I'm working with so far. Okay, so it's been a few months, so I have no idea where I left off in the filming process of this sewing studio transformation. And after today, I will be about 99% done. I'm still looking for a blue stool. I have a very specific one in mind that obviously doesn't exist, which is why I couldn't find it. And I'm also trying to find it thrifted, which adds to the fun. So that is the only thing that I don't have. I'm missing a chair, but Aside from that, after today, it will be completely done and I am so excited. Even having this much of it done, I have been so much more inspired to sew and create and spend more time in this space because it's very me. And um, I guess you'll see what I mean as I decorate and put this thing together. So this actually took so long to install because I had to wait for my dad to come and install it because these walls are concrete and I have zero experience with a hammer drill and also zero experience with measurements because I mismeasured and there is an exposed hole now. So I should probably fill that while I'm at this. To fix my mistakes, I'm going to be using dry decks. Never used this before, but I don't think it can be that hard. So let's see how this goes. I remove the pegboard to make space and then use the putty to fill the hole. Okay, since I'm working with a really small space, I really need to maximize it. So one of my ideas was to hang my ironing board on the wall here. I have this cute little one. I don't know where I got it. I've had it for years, um, but I want to kind of display it right here. But right now it's not too cute. I need to cover it and I bought this like white and yellow fabric that I thought could be really fun and also really on brand. So I'm going to attempt to figure out how to do this. I'm going to try to reuse as much as possible from this existing ironing board cover, including this little stopper and the draw cord. And to remove the cord, I found the only effective way was to seam rip it out. Once the cord was removed, I moved on to the cover itself. I used the old cover as a guide to cut a new one, leaving a one inch seam allowance, which will later be turned into a tunnel for my draw cord. I was very careful to make sure the pattern was straight because the last thing I wanted was a crooked vertical line. Then I surged the edges before moving on to create two buttonholes, which I clearly didn't strive for perfection because they are a little uneven, but good enough. After I opened the buttonholes, I sewed a one inch hem big enough for my cord to fit through. Then I took a safety pin and tied one end of my cord and fed it through one of the buttonholes and made my way around to the other end. Once I was done, it was time to cover my ironing board. Once it was all lined up, I pulled the draw cord to secure it and then reused the little stopper to tie it off and keep it in place. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this ironing board turned out just better than I thought it would. Update on my hole in the wall. 
Now that that's done, I can put my pegboard back up and get to organizing the space. I finally get to put up this Pepsi Cola sign I thrifted this summer. It needed a good wipe down before putting it up on the wall. I honestly had to wait months for these IKEA pegboard accessories to come in to complete this transformation, and here they are. I used them to display my threads that I used for my serger. Then I decorated the pegboards with all my other sewing accessories. To fill the blank corner, I opted for some doodles that I drew out earlier in the pandemic as a placeholder until I find something I really love. I used a piece of painter's tape to get the picture frames as straight as I could without getting out a level. I thrifted this gorgeous wicker basket and I thought it would be perfect to fit all of my rolls of paper that I had tucked into the corner. This way it looks intentional. Sticking with the wicker theme, I used this large wicker basket for additional storage. Thanks. You're so welcome. And now it's time for the final reveal. Okay, so that is it for my sewing studio transformation. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I am obsessed with my new space. It is very me, to say the least, especially with my art and primary colors. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited for all of the sewing creations that I will be creating in this space. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this transformation, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more fashion DIY content, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.